Welcome back into Sports Sunday. Going to take a little bit of a different twist here on Sports Sunday this week, talking Taekwondo. And who better to do it with than Juan Moreno, who is the national coach, three-time Olympian, two-time silver medalist. So it's tough to find a better authority than this uh, gentleman right here. Talk a little bit about the discipline and what you're doing with these youngsters this weekend in learning the art of this uh, of this uh, ta of taekwondo well first of all all these kids are really committed a lot of time a lot of energy to uh, to bettering themselves within the sport and what we're focusing on right now is is the sports side of the martial arts i mean obviously there's a lot of be great benefits that taekwondo gives men women children from physical fitness things to morals ethics values but this, uh, this weekend is kind of focusing on the sport development, trying to make them faster, stronger, more intelligent athletes. Um, so with that being said, it takes a lot of commitment, a lot of time to, uh, to get their bodies developed, to get their technique refined, and of course to gain the confidence to go out there and, and compete at a national level. So we're really tackling a lot of things, but this is where it starts. Every dream starts in a, in a small gym, in a small town, and in who knows where it will take them. The discipline in this sport, I would imagine, is different than a lot of others. Physically, the challenges sure. are myriad. You can see that. But I would imagine the mental challenges are equally as tough. You know, I mean, we're obviously different than your normal uh, all-American sport. I mean, we have an Asian background. Um, there is a lot of discipline and respect and loyalty that comes with the martial arts in general, whether it's a Japanese martial arts or a Chinese mm -hmm. martial arts. We happen to be a Korean martial arts. So right from the beginning, we're really teaching those morals and ethics and values type things um, to build, to instill them to become better people. And with that, of course, then the sport attributes come through. That it's a little different than baseball and basketball and football where right from the beginning, right. all they're learning how to do is be physical. They're not thinking about, again, the, the life skills that may, uh, they may need later on in life. Then how important do that you talk about the life skills? Uh, I would imagine then they intertwine with the discipline. I mean, it, it becomes really one of the building blocks of the discipline. Absolutely. Any coach, any business person, any teacher, um, they, they understand that to have a talented person is great, mm -hmm. but to have a talented person that is disciplined and focused and, and well-mannered um, and, and is coachable, they become even a better athlete. They become that super athlete. I mean, you look at all the talented people from the Michael Jordans of the world, or the Apollo Onos, or the uh, Mark Spitz, the, you know, Michael Phelps. All these guys are phenomenal athletes, but they're actually even stronger disciplined. They have stronger mental makeup than, than the average athletes, and that's what truly separates them. So Taekwondo, we feel like we have a little bit of an advantage because the focus is not to become a great athlete at the beginning. The focus is some of those disciplines, some of those moral ethics values that I talk about, and then an athlete develops. Which is an interesting challenge for youngsters, especially in our day mm -hmm. and age, because the patience factor, yeah. I would imagine that that's really a challenge for them to realize that I, we've got to find this sort of spiritual yeah. uh, level first before we can get to the physical. Well, you know, this is an instant gratification era. Right. I mean, you know, everybody has instant access with phones, computers, internet, iPads, everything. And I'm, I'm like that as well. <laughs> um, martial arts, we're lucky. We have a built-in goal system with our different belts, attaining different skills where, um, you can actually see by looking at your belt or looking at your uniform how you've developed where again in baseball and football you know you're getting faster you know you're getting stronger you know you understand the sport better but maybe you really can't see it so to speak so we have a we're lucky like that we have a different belt system from white to black belt everybody knows those belts but there's little checks and balances in between so that helps us um, develop we're going to watch you guys spar a little bit here today. When a lay person is watching Taekwondo and it's the first time they've watched it, what do they need to be looking for? How, how do we follow a match and understand what's happening in a match and understand who's having the advantage over the other? Well, it's really interesting. Our, our sport has really came into the technology age. Uh, nowadays, we actually compete with electronic chest protectors, and we wear these little apparatuses on our feet that will register uh, a point when, when the proper technique, the proper power, the accuracy is, is uh, employed then a point will be registered. We do have you know, judges scoring for face shots because we don't have electronic headgears yet. But really, to make it simple, watch um, predominantly for kicking. Taekwondo is a kicking art. I mean, punches do score, but kicks are a little bit more prevalent. Uh, watch for clean contact, unopposed contact, onto the chest guard or to the head, meaning not getting blocked or not getting deflected, clean techniques. Um, also, face kicks are, are worth more point value. So if you kick somebody in the head, it's worth three points, worth a body point is worth one point. So you'll see um, people taking a little bit more chances, trying to get, it's like shooting a three-pointer versus a layup, so. 
You're obviously, uh, one of your main focuses is the development mm -hmm. of the national team and to continue to develop it. And that's why you're here working yes. things at the grassroots. Talk a little bit about the development of the sport nationally mm -hmm. and the inroads that are being made in this country uh, for something that traditionally has not been particularly strong under the United States. Well, you know, it's interesting. The sport of Taekwondo, um, and I've been competing. I, I, right. My first Olympic Games was 1988, you know, 20 something years ago. And the United States was one of the powerhouses huh. uh, in the world. But because the world has gotten smaller, there's much more uh, availability to access to, you know, um, training apparatuses and things like that. Um, the world has gotten smaller and everyone's gotten better. Countries like Afghanistan, Iran, Morocco are phenomenal at this hmm. sport nowadays. So the United States, um, we have a challenge because we're not government based. You know, a lot of these uh, countries, they're getting paid to compete, they're getting paid to train, they're getting paid to win, where our athletes are still amateur, so to speak. So to have a grassroots development program like this um, is really important. It's, it's, it's the backbone of what we have in the United States. I mean, you, know, you look at, you know, Little League baseball, you look at soccer, you know, Pop Warner football. This is what we have to do in Taekwondo. We don't have those because it's not a traditional American sport. So for me as a national team coach to go out and work with programs across the United States, um, I feel like it's our lifeline, it's our bloodline. If I don't do it, we're just, we're, we're hoping the next great athlete comes. And yet you obviously have to have a passion to mm -hmm. do this. Where does the passion for you come from uh, to, to put the time and the effort uh, to develop essentially an entire program across the country. You know, I, I, I love competition. I mean, anything you want to play, anything that I can compete at, whether it's cards, whether it's a sport, whether it's anything, I love to compete. Um, and I never thought that I would get as much fulfillment and enjoyment out of coaching, but I do. I mean, I love working with these kids. I love seeing them succeed. I love to see the looks on their parents' yeah. face when they win a match, let alone represent the national team. Right. Um, so for me, it's, uh, uh, I remember, you know, people helping me. I remember people, you know, I come from Chicago, Illinois. I came from a very small school, not a big number of students, and I was able to go to three Olympic Games. I was able to get to where I'm at right now, but it, a lot of people helped me. I mean, remember training in garages and at people's houses and people taking me in their car to tournaments. So um, for me, it's a way of giving back. For me, it's a way of, of just doing what I call do the right thing model. The Olympic movement is an interesting thing because on one level it's become so corporate, yet on another level where you still have a grassroots sports mm -hmm. and the efforts going, which is one of your sports, there is still a purity, I would imagine, to the sport. Is that a fair statement? And, and do you feel good about where the Olympic movement is going as a whole? Well, it's a very fair statement. I mean, and it's, uh, I think for small market sports right. like Taekwondo, like fencing, yeah. um, our passion and our love for the Olympic Games is way different than the professional right. athletes. Yeah. And, and I know a lot of our NBA players actually enjoy the Olympics. They think, wow, this is such a special thing, but it's way more special to us because they leave and they go get their million dollar contracts. And, and we're kind of you know, grinding it out here in the gyms and in the small markets. And um, for us, it's, it's, it is a passion. It is a lifestyle. It is, um, the Olympics is our world. It's our NBA championships. It's our uh, you know, World Series. So. Um, the Olympics, it, it's a tough, I mean, it, it's getting very corporate and they're you know, starting to downsize because there's, there's certain sports that sell. I mean, swimming, gymnastics, figure skating, those are things that people want to see. So some of the small market sports like judo, wrestling, boxing even, yeah. is kind of getting pushed to the side. So we have our, um, we have our challenges to, to develop our sport, make it more uh, fan friendly, make it more exciting. And, that's just part of you know the evolution of sport in general. Well, your enthusiasm is infectious, and you're a great ambassador <laughs> for the sport. Congratulations. Best of luck. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Juan Reno with us on Sports Sunday. Stay with us. Parting shots as we come back.